finally time to build the Aussies down under a $750 gaming PC for April 2015. Though one thing I will say is that I got a lot of requests for $900 to around about $1,000 for a gaming PC. And for some reason when I looked at all the parts, everything was off. I mean, the difference between an i3 and an i5 was an extra $100. And the i3s clocked higher than the i5. And then the graphics cards, the difference between an R9 280 and a GDX 970 is over $200. So we had to factor in a lot of those things and so I'm going to say you either go with this or you go with something like around $1200 but with that being said, let's get on with it. Yeah. Yeah. So today's build will be a great build for 1080p gaming with new games like GTA 5 and Far Cry 4, you should be able to play those games at high settings, no problems. Another thing to remember as well is that prices kind of have gone up since the Australian dollar has weakened against the American dollar. And that being said, I will put all the links in the description below for the UK, Australia, and the US. So let's get on with it. So for the CPU, we're going with an i3-4160. Now this thing comes in at 150 Australian dollars, and for the price, it's actually pretty good considering the closest i5, which is clocked at 3.2 gigs, costs over $250. I was like scratching my head and thinking, what is going on in Australia at the moment? Why is the four core so much more expensive than the i3? I guess the i3 has been underrated, it's not selling enough. That being said, it's actually the one of the best value CPUs in Australia at the moment. So we're gonna go with it today since it's got four threads and it'll have no problems with those games that require four threads. And uh, that being said, let's move on to the next part. So for the motherboard, we're going with a B85. B45 from MSI. Now this thing comes in at 84 Australian dollars and it's a good motherboard for the price. I mean, the B85s are kind of that step up from the H81M and this one is a little bit better for overclocking than the H81M variants as it has a better VRM on board. I've personally used a variant of this B85 motherboard and I can see it does a fantastic job of running the Haswell four cores really well. Not only that, it stays cool and it'll support a graphic card at PCI Express 3 speeds as well so you don't have to worry about that so great board for the money so for the case we're going with a $45 Cooler Master 334U this case is just a decent case it's an entry-level case but it will fit all your all your components in there no problems at all installation should be pretty good since it is a Cooler Master case they do get things right when it comes to simplicity and that's all you're gonna need in today's build so for the memory, we're going with some G-Skill Rip Jaws 1600 speed DDR3 memory. Now this is one eight gigabyte stick of memory. It's also $84, so it's not too bad value for money, especially when the memory is pretty overpriced in Australia anyway. This is not too bad. Now you've also got one stick there, so if you wish to add another stick in the future to get 16 gigabytes of memory, you can do that, especially if you're going to upgrade to a four core eight threaded CPU in the future. So you just have to switch out the CPU as well. You can use the same motherboard. Anyway, this memory is good. All you have to do is bang in the XMP profiles and you've got yourself 1600 speed memory instantly. So for the hard drive, we're going with none other than the Western Digital Caviar Blue one terabyte. This thing comes in a little bit over 60 Australian dollars and for the money, it's a really good hard drive. It's fast, it's cheap. You've got a lot of storage there. You've also, in the future, if you wish to upgrade, you can use this as a backup hard drive. So Western Digital have you covered for the hard drive. Now for the graphics card, this is the most important part of your build. And for the value for money here, the R9 280 at 250 Australian dollars is pretty damn good value for money. Uh, so if you want to step it up to a better graphics card, your next thing up is like an R9 290, which is going for around $400. And then there's a GDX 970, which is going for around $470. So the price difference there is quite big. Though for $250, the R9 280 will do a fantastic job of playing games at 1080p and playing them pretty damn well. So for the power supply, this is one of the parts where I really like to spend a little bit of extra money if you can. You can go with a $55 500 watt power supply, that will be perfectly fine, though for an extra $24, you can get something that will last you into the future. So this is what we're going with. We're going with the Silverstone Strider Essential 600 watt 80 plus bronze power supply. Now it'll power this build perfectly fine. More, it's overkill for this build. But if you wish to upgrade your components in the future, you will generally won't have to worry about the power supply, especially if you're going with a four core uh, CPU and then you're going to step it up to like a GDX 970 or something in the future this power supply will be perfectly fine for that as well all while saving your power on the uh, power bill 
and being a more reliable suit than the cheaper components. So that's it for today. The total build comes in at 762 Aussie dollars and it's gonna be a great PC for gaming. So if you haven't already hit that like button and if you have any questions or comments then drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, subscribe as well. And if you wanna check me out on social media, all the links are over there, the Twitter, the Facebook, and also if you wanna contribute and support the channel, Patreon link's there too. Yeah, baby, choice is yours. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. So peace out for now and bye.